finally, I want to turn to, to Igor Jurgens, who uh, is the president of the Russian Union of Industrialists and, and Entrepreneurs. We've talked a lot about Russia. Igor, you may want to comment uh, how you see the long-term future uh, of Russia's relations with, uh, particularly with the West, which at the moment uh, are politically very bad, although, interestingly, trade is going up. All right, Igor. Thank you very much, Carl, and special thanks to Thierry de Montbrial, of course, for this fantastic opportunity to talk offline. Uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't get all of the speech of, of our uh, Chinese colleague, because I will start with uh, your idea of followers and hedgers. We are at the same time followers and hedgers. And believe me, inside the Russia, there are followers who would definitely would like to go along the centrally planning, economic and politically robust anti-Western policies. And there are hedgers who want to use this to restore the relationship with, uh, with the West. Uh, in 2003, Mr. Putin signed strategic partnership and cooperation agreement with the European Union. We started building common economic space, common security space, common everything. Okay, so now we arrive to the situation of strategic confrontation. And vice versa, with the Chinese People's Republic, we were at war on the Mansky Island uh, 50 years ago, and now we're in strategic partnership, embracing each other. This partnership is not harmonious. Many in Russia think that economic cooperation is lopsided, one-sided, uh, and uh, investment is not coming. But militarily and politically at this, at this particular period, we don't have any other place to go. And this is a, a marriage of convenience, which, uh, which will go on for some time, no question about that. But the coupling of the United States and China, which is taking place now, is very hard uh, test for us too. It will bring uh, more volatility on the financial markets, on economic markets, on the uh, supply chain. Uh, it will bring more uh, tension to the international system and to Russia also. And uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, making an estimate whether it's a Cold War or not yet a Cold War, but something else, I would say it's very close to the Cold War with uh, this uh, broadening of extent of the Cold War. Uh, because it, you know, only two years ago uh, from, from the same uh, rostrums uh, and the same, same panels as today, I was hearing that but there is no ideological component of the Cold War now because we're all in the free markets and everything else. Judging by the statements fr uh, from the President Xi Jinping and what is being in the make for the uh, 20th Congress of the Communist Party of China for the next year, uh, it is now ideological too. The same way it was between the Soviet Union and the United States. So from this point of view, I would say that uh, uh, hedgers in Russia uh, would be very cautious in taking sides if the coupling takes a, a, a resolute, uh, a resolute uh, a final uh, countdown. Because uh, we, I cannot imagine what will happen on the Russian stock exchange if, for example, tomorrow there is a conflict around Taiwan. And this conflict is in the making. If I, if I hear uh, uh, all right, then uh, the, the, the example of Hong Kong can show what might happen in the Chinese world, including Taiwan, if, if this decoupling goes all the way down. And which brings me to AUKUS. Uh, AUKUS is the creation of the new bloc. Uh, for Russia, it's very dangerous because NATO is, uh, is, uh, uh, is an opponent and uh, bordering on being an enemy, but it's an understandable enemy. It's an enemy with whom we have relations for uh, all those 50 years. It's an enemy or <laughs> opponent uh, with whom we have uh, uh, diplomatic relations. We have the Russian NATO Council. Uh, it's idle at the moment, but we have this instrument. What will happen with AUKUS or something else which would be created instead of uh, unified NATO is, is a big question mark. If tomorrow, for example, 
our Polish friends and, and Baltic states would uh, decide to create the same kind of a caucus uh, uh, on the borders of Russia because of the Ukrainian situation or, or something else, then, then it, it's, a, it's a real danger. So this is the second danger. Uh, China, Russia, uh, China, United States decoupling, AUKUS, then comes Afghanistan, which was mentioned here too. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, uh, I'm not talking and not commenting on how Biden decided to, to, to ex execute logistically the, the, this thing. But uh, it's a smart move if you talk about Russian-American confrontation because you give all these Islamic problems to, to, to Russian border. <laughs> smart move. Right. And you, you give it partly, of course, to China and Pakistan, but uh, that's beside the point. Uh, the most uh, serious thing is happening on the Tajik, Uzbek, uh, Turkmenian border where we have uh, our troops and our military installations. So from this point of view, I think that we are heading into a very serious confrontation before the things will get better. Because uh, when the United States declared that uh, uh, semiconductors will not be given to China at all, finished. We are, we are building that in Wyoming and other states. When the United States said that we are blacklisting Chinese PLCs, publicly owned companies, blacklisting them uh, on the one hand, and then Chinese replied that uh, no more information will be transferred from China to abroad without our full control, uh, which is the blockade, or informational blockade and everything else. So. It's a beginning of something which we don't know the end of. And Taiwan would be probably one of the testing grounds, but, but it's a very serious showdown. At the moment, Russia will be with China, at least verbally, but will be hedging its risk, no question about that. So uh, just to end on the, on the bright note, I would say yes, sustainable development concept, if they take it seriously in Glasgow next month, and if we really have an architecture for this sustainable development, decarbonization, green economy and all of that stuff, that gives us uh, the, the platform for the green diplomacy. No question about that. But before we get that, uh, here I, I'm, I'm with Greta Thunberg. It's 30 years lifespan. Uh, all of the tycoons in oil and gas say, okay, okay, 2050, but we will do our profit at the moment. And before we agree on all those transitory taxation of carbon and everything else, we'll, we'll blackmail Europe uh, by, 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 car, by coal, by gas, by oil, because you need that. You, you, you see what's happening with the gas price in Europe. So this is, uh, before we get better, we will get worse. And uh, unfortunately, the blame should be put on both sides. And I would then die by saying that uh, my colleague on the right remembers perfectly well when in Brussels we signed cooperation partnership and we thought that we are in the same family. And where we are now, we see. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Igor.